Welcome to metallic bonding. We've looked at uh, the bonding that occurs between a metal and a nonmetal, the bonding that occurs between a nonmetal and another nonmetal, but what kind of bonding occurs between metal atoms? To answer that, we first need to look at what electrons are actually doing in a metal. So here we have an atom of zinc. Uh, this atom of zinc is only showing the valence electrons. I haven't drawn in any of the others. So we have the two valence electrons for zinc. And what you would notice is, in a metal, the valence electrons are actually not attached to the atoms themselves. They're what we call delocalized. They're free to move around. And it looks something like this. The electrons are free to move around. They're not stuck uh, around this particular nucleus. And we have a zinc ion, and then free floating negative electrons. So zinc 2 plus and two negative electrons floating around. This is for a single atom. If we looked at an entire sample of zinc, we would see something that looks like this. A whole bunch of zinc 2 pluses, these big blue spheres, surrounded by electrons, what we call the sea of electrons. And this is metallic bonding. Okay, we see that metal cations are basically floating around in what we call a sea of electrons. All the particles here are mobile. They're able to freely move around. But what will happen is, uh, over time, because there's positive and negative charges involved, they are going to reach a somewhat stable, evenly distributed arrangement. And it's actually going to be a crystalline structure similar to what we saw with ionic crystals but not nearly as rigid because all the particles are able to move around whereas in an ionic crystal they're all stuck in whatever position they're in so the crystalline structure gives metals the same kind of strength that we would see in a crystal the same kind of hardness but at the same time it allows it to be flexible if I apply pressure on one part of a metal it'll start to bend because all those particles are able to move it won't shatter like an ionic crystal would. So because of this, we get the properties of malleability and ductility. This sea of electron arrangement is also useful for allowing us to create mixtures with metals. In fact, a special kind of mixture, it's a solid mixture called an alloy. So an alloy is a solid mixture whose primary component is a metal, uh, but it's mixed with some other substance, some other element. It can be a metal or a non-metal. Uh, for example, if we take two metals, if we take copper and tin, Cu and Sn, uh, that's going to give us bronze. The usefulness of the bronze alloy is that it has enhanced properties compared to the copper. Uh, bronze is harder than copper and also more easily workable. Uh, if you're studying ancient history, uh, you can impress your teacher with your knowledge about the, why the Bronze Age was such a big deal. Uh, tools got better, weapons got better, uh, and all because they discovered you can mix copper with tin to form a metal with better properties than either of the two uh, components. Another alloy that's a little bit more modern uh, comes up when you mix iron with carbon and other stuff. Okay, there's actually a whole bunch of different types of steel alloys. And all steel alloys are basically a lot of iron. Iron is a primary uh, component in steel, mixed with carbon, and then some other things. And depending on what those other things are, you get different kinds of steel. And steel is a lot stronger than iron is. So again, it has an enhanced property uh, compared to the original metal that made up the alloy. So alloys are a very useful uh, kind of mixture because they enhance the properties of the metals that are in them. That wraps up our lesson on metallic bonding. Any questions you have from this lesson, make sure you write them down in your notes and bring them in with you to class.